With me now from Washington is Roll Call columnist John Allen. All right, so John, the president-elect, meets with Rudy Giuliani on Sunday, but on Saturday he met with Mitt Romney, who's also under consideration for Secretary of State. Given the animosity between Romney and Trump during the campaign, how viable an option do you think Romney is for the job? In some ways, that animosity is actually uh, helpful in, in Trump uh, telegraphing uh, that he's willing to put the best people around him even if uh, they sometimes disagree with him. That's not something we've necessarily seen from Donald Trump a whole lot before, but uh, you know, a move to tap Romney, who he's said pretty terrible things about and who has said pretty nasty things about Trump, uh, would signal that. I think Mitt Romney would be uh, well regarded around the world, certainly uh, somebody that I think most people uh, in the establishment that Donald Trump hates so much uh, would find a little bit reassuring. And at the same time, I'm not sure that we should read too much into them meeting. What might be in it for Mitt Romney? I think being Secretary of State of the United States is a pretty good job, especially for someone who is uh, public service minded. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mitt Romney was a businessman for much of his career, but he was governor of Massachusetts. Uh, he ran for president twice. This is somebody who believes he has something to give back to his country uh, and I think to the world. And so uh, I think being Secretary of State would be, uh, you know, uh, not just an honor for him, but something where he'd really enjoy doing the work of going around. Uh, to foreign capitals and promoting the United States. All right, continue to watch that. Donald Trump also met with retired Marine General James Mattis on Saturday, uh, with Mr. Trump tweeting that Mattis was, quote, very impressive. The general, John, was known as Mad Dog during his time in the Marines. Does this tell us anything about the type of commander in chief Donald Trump is looking to be? If, uh, if you're a Marine, you want that nickname <laughs> Mad Dog. That's pretty good. <laughs> right, it's like uh, high uh, praise, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mattis knows the U.S. military as well as anybody. He's been uh, been head of U.S. Central Command before, uh, somebody who I think is well regarded by his peers um, and is generally well regarded within the Obama administration. Um, you know, there's, there's a continuity to picking uh, Mattis to, to be at the Defense Department. He is known as somebody who is willing to relieve people of command. That's the uh, military uh, version of you're fired, mm. uh, the Donald Trump <laughs> phrase. So right. I think there may be some similarity in their bearing there. Uh, the one concern that might be raised is uh, having somebody who comes out of the military in the civilian leadership of the military. Uh, you know, the, there's always been a premium on uh, having some distance between uh, what the Pentagon does and its, uh, its officer corps and uh, that civilian leadership. So uh, basically so the defense secretary doesn't end up being more of an advocate for his agency and less of an advocate for the president's mission. I don't think in Donald Trump's case that that should be too much of a problem. All right, John, in other news here, the president-elect continued to express his disapproval for the cast of the musical Hamilton after they delivered a message on inclusiveness to Vice President-elect Mike Pence on Friday night. What are the optics here, John? What does the president-elect achieve by repeatedly tweeting that the cast should apologize? Well, the theory on the left is that he uh, achieves distracting the news media from other stories going on right now, including his settlement uh, for $25 million of a series of fraud suits involving Trump, Trump University. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what to, to believe in terms of what his motivation is. He obviously doesn't uh, put a footnote in each of those <laughs> tweets or subtweet himself with the motivation. Oh, if he did, John. Interesting <laughs> I wish he did footnotes too. those would be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, look, I'm. I, if he's going to get in, the fight, in a fight with the cast of a Broadway show, that's very much in line with uh, the way that he conducted himself on the campaign trail. He also uh, blasted Saturday Night Live in a tweet uh, this week <laughs> saying he saw part of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, today saying he saw part of uh, their performance last night and was uh, not particularly impressed with it. Um, you know, he likes to opine. He's going to continue to opine. I, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Um, mm. You know, and I, and I understand why some people are upset that uh, the cast of Hamilton uh, decided to single out Mike Pence and in a pretty aggressive way uh, go after him. The guy just won the vice presidency. Um, you know, if they want to send him a letter, th there are any number of venues that they could do that in to invite, the, invite him into their home and then uh, trash him seemed, uh, seemed, you know, in poor taste to me. Yeah, um, so it's interesting. John Dickerson asked Vice President-elect Pence about this on Face the Nation. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I heard the remarks uh, that were made uh, at the end, and uh, you know, and you know, what I can tell you is, I, I wasn't offended by what was said. I'll leave to others whether it was the appropriate venue to say it, but but I want to assure people who were disappointed in the election results 
People are feeling anxious about this time in the life of our nation that President-elect Donald Trump meant exactly what he said uh, on election night, that he is going to be the president of all the people of the United States of America. And to see this man who's, who's bringing this energy and this leadership to the process of, of assembling this team and laying out an agenda to revive our country and strengthen America at home and abroad is to see someone who is uh, not only a great mind, but a great heart. He's got a heart for the American people. And I just, I just want to reassure anyone, uh, anyone, including the, the actor who spoke that night, that that uh, President-elect Donald Trump is going to be president of all the people, and I, I couldn't be more honored to stand with him. So, John, what do you make of the contrast here between what we heard from the vice president-elect and the president-elect on Twitter? <laughs> well, I, look, Mike, Mike Pence is um, much better at sort of traditional political messaging. Uh, I believe uh, if you watch Mike Pence over his career, and I think there are people who disagree, point to, to things he's done over his career that... Uh, uh, that he has, um, you know, singled out certain people. But I, my view of Mike Pence is that he actually uh, has been somebody who uh, has really avoided uh, the politics of, uh, of division for most of his career. Um, and, and so it doesn't surprise me that he has a different message than Donald Trump does or that he articulates it in a different way. Um, but uh, Mike Pence is not going to be in charge of this, this mm -hmm. White House. Yes, I, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see, though, what kind of influence and how that interaction continues throughout the course of the Trump presidency. All right, last question for you, John. One of Donald Trump's closest and most controversial advisors, Steve Bannon, has done some print interviews in recent days. After largely staying out of the spotlight, he told the Wall Street Journal he keeps a low profile because, quote, politics is war. Do we have any sense right now, John, how Steve Bannon is going to be shaping the Trump White House as chief strategist? I mean, I think you can look at the campaign uh, and, and see that uh, Steve Bannon's uh, want is for Donald Trump to be as aggressive uh, as he possibly can, to be as controversial as he possibly can, to, uh, to go after opponents uh, with, uh, you know, with, without any mercy. I mean, this is Steve, Steve Bannon's basic way of doing things is to divide and destroy. And so uh, I suspect that's how the White House will run, obviously, give him uh, give him a little time to get in there and, and see uh, if that's in fact what he does or if there's some pivot now that there's a, a governing mandate. Uh, what I think is clear is that Steve Bannon's a pretty intelligent strategist uh, and he saw in Donald Trump, uh, you know, how to win the presidency and uh, was able to help guide that. So um, people who underestimate Steve Bannon do so at their peril. Hmm. All right. John Allen in Washington for us. John, thank you. Take care, Elaine.